on everybody it's your boy d from dnc digital and i'm back back with another instagram live on the road to run it back pre presented by mission pro wrestling i'm proud proud sponsor i got ryan there always 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 there to um to support and i appreciate you what's going on buddy gorilla press vanity my girl vanity hope all is well uh today we are interviewing uh the lovely shaw guerrero uh, she's going to be the special guest ring announcer at Run It Back, again, presented by Mission Pro Wrestling, at Pinball's Kingdom in Buda, Texas, December 11th. I appreciate all you guys. Um, no audio. Can you hear me? Okay. Vanity, you got me? You good? Can you hear me? I want to make sure that everything is good that everybody can hear me. Okay, cool. So we're gonna bring uh, Heat, uh, Shaw Guerrero to talk about her career, all her projects, a bunch of projects that she's doing and what we can expect from Mission Pro Wrestling. Miss Shaw Guerrero, how are you doing today? Hey, what's up? How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Uh, I'm uh... I'm good. I'm nervous for this week, but I'm excited. You're, you're, I'm the one that's nervous. You are Miss Shaw Guerrero. I am telling everybody that I'm like, this is a big one for me. I, I, I got to tell you, I appreciate your time. And um, it's very much appreciated. It, I, there's so much I want to get into and so little time. So I'm going to try to shoot them all off. There is one story I do want to tell you, if that's okay with you. Absolutely. Bring it on. I went through all my storage lockers and I found this. <gasps> yep, that's his signature, his swoop to swoop to swoop. Yes. Oh. So so it was it was after a show at the garden and uh he was leaving with Ray and and Chris. And um I I know that they're just trying to get home. Oh. They just they just went through a bunch of crap and you know, they just want to get home. But I I just I I put my magazine in front of him. I'm like, "Mr. Guerrero, do you mind Be, you know, and and a short side story." When I used to start going to shows, uh, I remember going like at 11. And my mom's like, where are you going? I'm like, I'm going to the wrestling show. And she's like, doesn't it start like at 7 or 8? I'm like, yeah, but if you're there early enough and they're nice enough, they can sign some autographs and take pictures. And she always taught me, she goes, that second, she's like, hey, they're at work. Do not bother anybody at work. Make sure you ask nicely. Make sure you're respectful and ask nicely. So oh, um, Get it for your mom. <laughs> oh, my mom. My mom's the best. So I, I said, Mr. Guerrero, if you don't mind, would you mind just signing my magazine? He's like, sure. He signed it. And I told him, I was like, can I just tell you something real quick? And he's like, sure. And I was like, I know the deal. I know, I know the whole deal. It's fine. But when you won the title, you, you, you did something for my family. Because my mother doesn't like wrestling. But when your father used to come out, she's like, look at him. He's so handsome. He's so charming. He has such a great smile. And so when he won the title, my mom jumped up and we both celebrated together. And I was like, you became the people's champion. Campeón de la gente, you know? And I'm not Mexican, but I am Hispanic and I can relate to making me feel like the janitor can be the CEO one day. That no matter what, you can get on top of it. And every, you know, it was just, it was such a cool moment to be able to tell him that. He looked at me, and he put down his bag, and he gave me a hug. And he, he told me, he goes, he was just like, thank you, brother. I'm like, thank you for just, just doing that for us and giving me that moment with my family. You know, my mom was always tuning in when you were there. So I, I just wanted to tell you that, that I had that moment with your father, and I, it's a moment that I'll never forget. Oh my God. Thank no, thank you. That was actually like getting me like emotional. I'm like emotional for a lot of reasons this week, but like uh I I loved hearing that. So thank you. And like he really did love you guys. Like he loved the fans and uh, you know, he, he gave his entire life like for this art and to entertain and you know, to live the Guerrero legacy because Grandpa Gory started it and um yeah. and so that's that's amazing. Like he really was so humble and so kind and the fact like that you were super respectful like you were already like good in his book 
honestly. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm sure he went home and he talked to you about me. You know, hey, there's this (laughs) cool kid over there. Um, So I I just want to talk to you about uh, about him just for a second, because I know you have your own path that you are creating for yourself. When you are a second generation um, person in the wrestling business, do you feel like that adds a, a layer of pressure or do you or do you feel like that's pressure that you want to welcome because of that, because of carrying your name? Right, right. Well, it's both. Honestly, like my dad was second generation. So he like he had pressure from his father, Gory, because Gory was like he was, you know, top banana, top banana in Juarez in Mexico and, and Texas. And so uh, um, he had a lot of pressure. And I as a third generation wrestler, like absolutely. Absolutely. I feel both good and bad pressure. Honestly, like I was kind of venting to my husband today after um, I did a training session today and I um, streamed it on Twitch and I, uh, I felt very vulnerable because I'm like, I'm showing people kind of like how the sausage is made essentially. And it's uh, right. Yeah. And it's like when a wrestler is training, like it's not awesome. It's not what you guys get to see the finished product. It's doing stuff over and over it's, it's a bunch of stuff yeah yeah it's a lot and it's like thinking things through and like failing it's a, like practice is failing essentially mm-hmm. and you just gotta keep pushing through you know um and i felt very vulnerable and i feel both so blessed because this family this legacy that i'm a part of opens a lot of doors it opens a lot of doors it's giving me so much um like just so many opportunity and so much love from people that i've never met before and it's amazing but at the same time, people expect me to be just like my dad, be just like my mom, be just like my uncles, my cousins, my grandpa. And it's just like, I, I, I love you all. I'm going to do the very best I can, but I'm going to be me and it's not going to be exactly what everybody wants. And that's okay, man. Honestly, I got into wrestling to have fun and I got into wrestling to have a connection with my dad and to see if I can do this. And right. that, that's it. If y'all, if y'all are down for it, cool. Uh, you are making an appearance uh, in the Diamond Cup for Generation uh, Championship Wrestling in Florida. You're going to be facing one of my other buddies, Renee Michelle, who is a very lovely woman. And uh, I know there's been a little bit of stuff online, but um, I know I looked up your social media and there was one particular post where you decided that your contribution to pro wrestling wasn't going to be in the ring. And you almost felt shame in being okay with that. Can you talk about that decision? And what that moment was like? Right. Um, well, because, I mean, initially I did do wrestling for FCW, like WWE's developmental brand at the time. and when You were the happened, last queen of FCW, was that correct? I was! <laughs> I remember that. Um, I learned so much there, and I gained so much. Uh, it made me grow up real fast, honestly. Um, I don't regret it at all, but it's also, like, um, that was hard. That was hard, like, when that didn't work out because that was the big dream, you know what I mean? And um, and I think me having to deviate away from wrestling because it's both good and bad for me. I, have a, I do have a lot of negative connotations with wrestling and, I guess, how I was trained um, and whatnot. And so, honestly, I'm trying to, like, circle back to, like, the question. I'm sorry. Um, no, that's okay. But... You know what? Like, I did feel shame because people would always ask me, why don't you wrestle? Why don't you do this? Like, why don't you follow your dad's footsteps? Why don't you follow his legacy? And all I have to say to that is, first of all, my sister doesn't wrestle and she is, she's doing my dad's legacy because she is a good person. She's generous. She's loving. And she does everything she does with 110% passion. That's my dad's legacy. And like with no matter what I do, whether it's in wrestling or not, I'm doing that legacy right now. Chavito is doing that right now, whether he's wrestling in Hollywood, doing whatever he wants. It is. And I put a post of like what being a Guerrero is and what's wrestling in there. Not necessarily. That's what is in our blood and we love it. And it's like, I don't know. It's just in us. You know what I mean? But being a Guerrero is so much more. You know what? That's a perfect segue to my next question, because you gave credit to your father for being a father first and a wrestler second, which goes along with everything you just said. Now, being in the business yourself, what have you learned about time management when it comes to relationships and learning how to pursue your passion, but also make sure that you're there at home? Yeah, man, that's a great question. I'm still figuring it out, uh, honestly. But I think I, I have found that, like, I know when I was with WWE, like it's you're all in because that is 100% your job. You know what I mean? Like you, you eat, breathe, 
do everything wrestling. And that's amazing because they pay for you to be able to do that. Um, right. And like here, I, I think I kind of like it a little bit more. The fact that I can still be a dancer, still be a wife, still be a fur baby mama and also do wrestling. I, I actually like it more. I'm a nomad. I've never been one person that like, I will do this one job for 10 years. I'm like, Oh, that sounds awful. I can't do that. I have to like, <laughs> at least like, no, it's like, and it works for so many people. And that's great. I just, I have a short attention span. I'm like, I want to do everything. So yeah. um, honestly, the key to it is balance, balance every single day and, um, and check in, check in with your family members and make sure that you are there for them and that your relationship is good. Cause if your home relationships aren't good, everything else is going to crumble. Definitely. I, I totally uh, agree with you. And that's something that doesn't have to only go for wrestling. It goes for everybody. I mean, I'm trying to pursue something and, you know, you want to make sure that the people around you who are supporting you, that you are taking care of them, too. Um, so uh, one thing about your father that I, I saw on your social media, I want to know what what Smallville and Cheesecake, what about those two things make you think about your father? You're the first person that's ever asked me that. Oh, my God. Um, Miss Shaw, I am trying to be one of your best friends. So I did an immense amount of research on you because... That's my deal. Get used to it, all right? Because this is the kind of interviews that I like to do. I love it. I love it. No, for sure. So um, basically, Small Villain Cheesecake is a tradition we would do every time my dad got home from SmackDown. So he pretty much, oh, God, um, Friday Night SmackDown, do 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 like, um, it kind of changes throughout the years as, we, as we've seen. But like they did different days, and then sometimes right. they'd be live, sometimes they'd be taped, right? Exactly, yes, okay. for sure. During the tape days, I remember Dad came home on Wednesdays. And okay. um, we made sure we didn't, like, we didn't go out with friends. We were like, Dad's home, we're home, pretty much. Okay. And, uh, and basically, we, when he got off the plane, Dad always brought us presents and always, like, showered us with so much love at the airport. That was back when you could, like, almost go to the gate, uh, pretty much, uh, when we were really little. And then eventually, you know, the Tampa airport is iconic because we would always meet Dad there. And then go straight to Cheesecake Factory because Dulce Leche Cheesecake is his absolute favorite. That was his cheat day. Wednesday was Dad's cheat day, and it was off the chain so <laughs> we would basically go get his cheesecake we would come back to our little apartment and order sushi and watch smallville which was like basically this now i watch it and i'm like oh my god this is so corny but it's like the life of uh of clark kent as superman and it was on yeah the CW. when lana awesome. turned heel on me i was just completely shocked i, I was know, like I hey she she, lo she looks good she looks good with that mean face oh yeah but you know, but she broke my boy's heart, you know? I know. No, I loved it. I loved it. But we're obsessed with it. We were so obsessed. I'm still obsessed with it. I still watch it. Um, but yeah, uh, that, that was family tradition. So when you, when you talk about, you know, you, you, you know, you had your schedule for your dad. You had yeah. to work yourself around, uh, you know, his job. Mm -hmm. Now are you having a, more of an understanding of the grind and the travel that, that comes with this business? And how do you, how do you, um, what was that epiphany that like, oh, I get it now. I totally understand. Honestly, like my first month in, in FCW, I, my, my first bump, really, I was like, oh, this, oh, damn. Like, this is just. Forget to tuck the chin. You forget to tuck the chin. And then. Like, it was like so much. I feel like I want to say my first month of FCW because I just didn't realize like how hard wrestling is like how much time and dedication and how smart you got to be to understand and like the psychology and being away from my family was hard and like just knowing and also just like being done with a training session you don't want to do anything the rest of the day because you're just like beat you, you just got hit by a truck basically and you're like yeah let's go do other stuff um no let's <laughs> stay home and take an epsom salt bath but so honestly, like, it wasn't until I got in the business, I didn't realize how amazing and talented. I mean, I always knew that because he's my dad, but it's different once you get into it because you're like, oh, I get it. Uh, one thing, one thing I, I forgot to mention, I wanted to say it at the top of the hour. Um, happy belated birthday to you and your husband. Thank you. I know you. You, guys, you guys are like a week apart or something. You yeah. actually share a birthday with one of my cousins, so I thought that was cool. Another another thing that happens another thing that happens in October that you really enjoy is Halloween, and um, so 
I know people I like to ask what's your favorite Halloween costume or what was your most impressive. What was the worst one that you ever came across that you had to wear for the night? Oh, my God. Honestly, like, this might surprise you. I, like, don't get to dress up for Halloween, like, ever. You have I so think- many Halloween posts. You have you have uh, Morticia, like, even the day after Halloween. Just, like, this is still me. I'm still oh, this no, one. Yeah, like, I, I am Halloween in my soul. And honestly, okay. that's why I've never gotten to go in costume as an adult in my life is because I'm always performing or working on Halloween. So I'm I'm either with the Vaudettes dancing, I'm doing burlesque, I'm uh I was doing a signing this past Halloween. So like I didn't get to dress up at all. And so I never get to dress up and um but I guess it's always Halloween for me because all of the characters I play in burlesque or in dance or when I choreograph the VODs, it's rooted in Halloween and darkness and all that fun stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I want to talk about the Vaudettes. Um, so I, I didn't only want to look them up. I looked up burlesque. I had to educate myself in burlesque. So it turns out that it came out around the 17th, 18th century. And it was in England. And when it came over here, it, it it was like England and us, and then it, the popularity just t- totally switched. Mm-hmm. And so now I read that in the in the Prohibition era, that when they started closing clubs down, cl- started closing uh, bars down, that the burlesque community also took a hit, and it kind of died in the seventies. Mm-hmm. What do you credit the rebirth, the renaissance of burlesque in this era now? Honestly, I think the reason why I love burlesque is because it's the outcasts, it's the people that aren't understood, it's it's where it like has been, it's always been underground for the most part, and it just yeah. kept becoming, and, and it just like kept being underground, and then underground became cool, you know, where we're like, oh, it's a speakeasy, how cool, and it's like, and honestly, like, I, I don't have a specific answer, but it's basically, I feel like I want to say, it's the outcasts. It's the people that didn't feel like they belonged anywhere. I feel like burlesque provides a home because it's like, yes, your creativity is welcome here. Yes, your body is welcome here, no matter what it looks like. Like, yes, like your 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 gender, your age, gender, what whatever it is, come here and let it out. And you know what I mean. You know what I mean. So anybody that feels like they don't belong, I feel like I credit them because they kept it alive. And and thank God, like we're getting into more body positive. Um, in a more general sense in the U.S. But, um, but yeah, I feel like anyone that's brave enough to get out there and do it, like, they deserve part of the credit. There are a few words I want to pick out of what you just said. You said body positivity and you said bravery. So okay. I'm trying to get this question together, and I've been working on it since yesterday. Do you feel like social media has constructed what a woman's body should be and now, to that point, do you feel like anything above a two or a three makes a woman brave when it should be just her generally being happy with her body? So, yes, I do believe social media has a very big, uh, a very big influence on women and, like, and our bodies and men, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. It has a big influence on all of us. And, um, and so, and I believe, like, honestly, like, we need to just accept people as they are. You know, and I'm not like, and you I take the word bravery out of it because it just it just seems that, like a human being should just be happy with who they are, and not have to tag the word brave to it because I feel like all women are beautiful, mm-hmm. and I, it it's just like they just see so many things and they feel like I gotta look like that or I gotta look like that, and if I don't, I'm brave. But it's just you're just beautiful just the way you are. That's the point well, I was trying to get to. Do you think you absolutely. agree? No, and I, I want to like clarify when I say brave, I didn't, I didn't mean that in a way of like, you know, when someone's like, Oh my God, you're so brave for wearing that. I hate that. Cause I'm like, that is not a compliment. I'm like, that's, I, that's what I'm, like, I'm yes. Like I look amazing no matter what, I guess when I say bravery, I mean, taking your clothes off in front of people, no matter what your body is. I was like, yeah. that, that's what I mean by bravery. That's what I mean by like, and showing people your art and like what you think is sexy or what you think is funny is really, it, it is brave because it's like, oh my God, like, like, I don't know if these people are going to get my sense of humor or cause that's what burlesque is. You know, it's like, it's humor and it's, and it's um, political and everything like that. It's scary to come forth and tell people all of that and to take your clothes off in front of people. So like, that's what I meant by brave. And I'm really glad that you like, like brought that, 
brought that up because people need to know because so i have that conversation with my with my girlfriend and you know and, and and another conversation we had is um the idea of burlesque you mm -hmm. are wearing not a lot of clothes and you're showing a lot of parts of your body mm -hmm. there's a sexy element to it it's not like oh, oh my god look at that it's there there's um there's a classy sexiness to it how do you how do you not, and not to me, because I totally understand what you're doing. But how do you defend that to people who put you in the pile of women who just do it for the likes and do it mm. for the attention? Attention. Right. Yeah. Yes. So I feel like, and I've gotten this comment multiple times as to how I dance and stuff like that. Hey, is that your husband? Holy crap. Oh, yeah. That was my husband. <laughs> you can see him in the oh, mirror. Um, but uh, I was doing it for his uh, whiskey live right now. Um, so basically what I have to say to those people is I do not do burlesque for you. I don't Fair. do burlesque for you. I don't, I don't, I, this is 100% for me. The reason why I got into this is because I was like, wow, burlesque is like the ultimate way that I can love and accept my body. And, and it marries like, what I love to do, which is performing. And so it's just like, this is not for you. I, and honestly, I'm not performing for your reaction. I'm, I guess I'm performing to prove a point and to like, I guess, make sense of what's going on in my head. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so it's honestly an expression. It's an extension of who I am. And, and what I love about the way I do burlesque is like, it's angry and it's, it's very much like, fuck you. And, and people <laughs> tend to like it, honestly, cause I'm an angry burlesque performer. I I'm very edgy and I don't, I'm not all like, huh. I, I don't do a lot of the classic stuff, which is great. I'm not saying that classic is not yeah. like awesome, but it's just what it's a way I, it's, it's therapy. It's my therapy. And I don't go to therapy for anybody else but me. Amen. Um, so you, you mentioned burlesque has a comedic element to it and, and reading up on it today, that's what I learned. And that's another thing that I, that I enjoyed learning about it, about that world that you're in. So it turns out that having that comedic element, there were, uh, there were shows where they would be openers for Abbott and Costello, Jackie Gleason, Sid Caesar, and Red Skelton, who are all comedy heroes to me. Um, can you talk about the parallels between the burlesque comedy world and that of pro wrestling when it comes to traveling and that that traveling circus type of element? Right. No, um, that's really exciting because, like, honestly, with not just burlesque, but with, like, a lot of art forms, even in dance, uh, with, like, what more of the Vaudettes do, um, like, we're telling a story. We are telling a story, and we are trying to get your attention right from the get-go. And um, it is, it's hard on the body, even though like I'm, I found burlesque and I was like, oh, it's so nice on my body, unlike wrestling. But then at the end of the day, I like, I've done like so many burlesque workshops and, and dance things where I'm like, my back's out the next couple of days because I can't move. Um, but honestly, we're all just telling a story. We're all trying to just be the person that we want to be. And like that, I feel like the people in wrestling have that same like that thing where it's like I want to be that person I've always dreamt of and in burlesque I felt like I have a lot more control over that because I'm the producer I'm the costume designer I I'm the choreographer I'm the performer so it's I have all of the control pretty much and I and I do love that I don't think wrestling kind of gives you that exact same thing but it's very similar we're telling stories um it's funny that your your uh your awesome awesome husband just walked by because from the Vaudettes, I want to move on to the Vaud Villains because your husband performed for WWE under the name of Aiden English as part of the Vaud Villains. Um, can you tell us about wrestling with whiskey? Because I know you just mentioned that, but I want uh, all the people watching to know. No, yeah, definitely. Honestly, I could do you one better because, like, at six o'clock, he is going to be live on YouTube, and you guys can definitely check it out. But honestly, wrestling with whiskey started with like. Matt, like, always noticed his father, like, is a straight-up G and could just, like, sip his scotch, like, without anything. No chaser. He was, like, actually tasting what it, what, like, the complexities of it all. And, yeah. um, and I'm over here, like, shooting JMO, like, I don't care. It's fine. But, <laughs> um, but Matt wanted to do that. And he worked his way up, like, with learning different whiskeys and like it, his interest grew into almost an obsession and basically it's mixing 
his love of the wrestling world with whiskey and just and just bringing people on his journey. It's not snooty. It's not pretentious. Matt is just learning. And so he just wants to learn with you along the way. And you get to learn how to like actually sip alcohol like a grown up. So nice. <laughs> unlike me. Um, so I, re I read up on him because that's just the guy I am. By the age of 20, he had already been in 20 stage productions and he was in, you know, that. So the Drama King um, name really is because he is the, the, the Drama King. So what's one of the, what is one of your favorite songs that he walks around singing in the house? Actually, so it's really funny. Um, Matt doesn't listen to music. Like he, uh, he doesn't really do that. And the songs that he does sing around the house are made up songs that he sings in his head and he sings them out loud over and over and over again. And he doesn't realize he's doing it, by the way. Like he just, it's just part, he just naturally sings about butter. He'll sing about butter over and over and over again in like the same tune. And all of a sudden he hears me across the house like, shut up. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> Have you noticed that you've been singing the same, like the same melody for the past two hours? And he's like, oh God, no, I didn't. And I'm just like, oh my God, you have to stop. So those are the songs he sings. Um, so I, I, you, you guys do some Twitch, uh, some, tw some Twitch shows together. And there is a huge running joke about the, the tickle fight and that he hates being tickled. Can you tell me any story that stands out that he was just the most upset about you even trying to tickle him? He like, honestly, if I even accidentally, so like, you know, I'm a good wife. Like when, when I sense like he, he's hurting from wrestling or something, I'll scratch his back and, you know, I'll like do nice things for him. But if I, God forbid, like gently graze my hand, like, along whatever, like uh, along his back, along his leg, along his like, I don't know, his elbow. He'll freak out cause he, cause the tickle, like he, he's so ticklish and he, he, poor thing. Like he doesn't mean to, but he like, he reacts violently. Like he'll be like, whoa. Like, <laughs> you so said he I'm doesn't here. mean to react violently. Yeah, like he just reacts violently and just, I guess it's just like, you know, people who get scared, like they either like cower or they'll go to punch. Just a like, reflex punch. Yeah, I know. What he you does mean. a reflex. Like he would never hit me, but he, he just like his whatever appendage will will extend and I will be in the line of fire. So, um, yeah, that's um, basically I, he's terrifying. And so the fact I, I can like, relate because my girlfriend has told me if I ever tickle her feet, she's going to kick me in the face. And yeah. she's like, I don't mean to do it, but it's going to happen. It's going to um, happen. You, when you talk about being a good wife, if he's home from the road, sore from a match, you know, you, you'll, you'll take care of him, you'll rub his back and, you know, make him soup, something like that. What about that time that you chopped him five times? <laughs> because I saw how bad you felt. And he was just like, whatever, like, leave me. All right, just get it over with. Leave me alone. I did feel bad because I'm like, I don't want to hurt him, even though it was, like, very satisfying. And um, really you seem funny. very proud of your chops. I was, I was, I was, I still got it. Um, because like, I feel like chops or something, like we practice them, but like, you know, no one wants to be like the person in class, like, hey, let's work on chops. Be like, screw you, man. Like, this is gonna suck. Yeah. But, um, and so, and I've never chopped Matt. I've not, I don't think I've ever chopped him before. So inflicting pain was just, it made me feel a little sad. <laughs> but I was proud. There, they were good chops. There was, um, so there was there was an episode of Talk is Jericho where you went with the Vaudettes, I, I believe, to perform on the on the cruise, and then he decided that it would be a gathering of the Guerreros. It was you, your lovely mother, and uh, Chavo, and it was such an emotional episode. Um, I was definitely just tearing up, just from these awesome like these awesome stories about your father and um, what everybody's love means to you. So. I, unless I'm mistaken, that may have been the first time addressing it in a public forum where, you know, the audience was a large, large audience. And, you know, the, the venue for that speaking, you know, was, was just a large, it was just a large, large audience. Was that cathartic for you or was that still a little, little difficult to address? I mean, talking about 
uh, the harder aspects of living with my dad, especially publicly, like in an interview, it's one thing, cause I can discuss it with you. Like, but being in front of the audience being, and also being with Chris, who we've known for years and who we love very much and, and Chavo and mom and yeah. Sherilyn was, was off in the wings listening to, and we could see her. And, um, and then all of my dear friends, the Vaudettes were like right there front row. And I was like, Oh my God, like this is, it was very, it was very cathartic. Yeah, I would say so. I think it was almost like closure in a lot of ways because we also, we don't talk about the negatives a lot of the time with my dad because I think we don't want to break the fans' hearts or we don't want to like, you know, dad is exalted in a lot of ways and which is amazing because he's an amazing man. Sorry, the cat. That was um, okay. But but talking about the harder stuff, like people sometimes don't want to hear it or they, um, they get defensive, I think for my dad, which I understand, but like my mom's experience is valid. And so was mine. And so was Chavo's and, and Chris's, you know? And so he was also a hard man to be around and, um, when he wasn't well. And, uh, yeah. so it, it was, I think there was a lot of closure and I, I just remember feeling like so emotionally drained after. And I was like, there, there was there was a moment even when uh, Chris Jericho spoke about your father, and I don't I don't want to start it, but it was just a beautiful moment that he got emotional just from talking about your father having a prayer together with the guys in the back. Oh yeah. Now I know that there's a I know that there's a brotherhood and such a family dynamic when it comes to the wrestling business. Can you tell me what it was like growing up with all these crazy crazy uncles, and what what was it like for you? after everything happened you know what was it like for you for them to reach out and just say i got you if you need anything no um i that is one of I, i've always said being a guerrero is a blessing and a curse um and they are definitely a blessing i feel like the best part about being a wrestler in general let alone a guerrero is the people the people that you meet and i, I remember like that was the biggest thing i missed about wrestling because i missed the community of wrestling and you just meet the best people you meet the best people and i've been so blessed to have amazing father figures in my life you know not only from chris and ray and um dean malingo and you know um benoit when he was around and i mean and joey mercury like i've had and punk like so many people love my dad so much and looked out for us like hardcore looked out for us and so that's just been the biggest blessing and i'm so thankful to still have that to this day um, and after he died, honestly, like it was so hard in so many ways. Um, life was pretty crappy, but when I turned 16 that next year, actually like everyone showed up, like, like all the guys, like either sent presents or called or made me feel really, really, really special. Cause they knew it was my first birthday without my dad. And, um, I remember that I remember feeling very, very blessed, but like Booker T and Charmel like sent me like a little crown because it's like from King Book. And I was like, Whoa. <laughs> like, it was just, um, the love of the wrestling community can't be matched. And I just, I'm so grateful that they're my family. They're the best part of the business. One of the more interesting tributes I saw, uh, during the tribute shows was, uh, Vince McMahon, mm -hmm. uh, tons of stories about him, mm -hmm. of you know, whether you agree with it or not, like just, his personality in the writer's room or his personality in Gorilla, whatever the case may be, you hardly see the guy show any emotion. Mm -hmm. So he had to compose himself talking about your father and just the way he said that he was a good man and a damn good man. It was more like, you need to understand what I'm trying to tell you about this man. Right. What did you, did you expect your father to have that much of an impact on other people? I feel like at the time of his death and when we were seeing all the wonderful tribute videos and stuff like that, I didn't register anything besides my own grief, honestly. Okay, yeah. Trying to get through and publicly, like get through, pu get through it all publicly as well. Uh, yeah, um, and so that was a whole thing, but um, but honestly, like, no, like, it's crazy. Like, I did not realize, like, of course I realized, like, when he died-ish, like, I guess how how many fans were upset and, and all of the, um, 
you know, the media and everything like that. Like I understood, but I was just so much in a bubble. And I, I feel like I suppressed a lot of my emotions, my anger, my sadness, my like everything about my dad until I got back in the wrestling industry willingly and actually understood. It, it really took that long. Like I always knew he was special to everybody, but like it didn't really hit me until I got into the business. Um, I want to switch gears a little bit to your amazing mom. Uh, she, she did some spots, you know, when she was just getting into the business. And there are a lot of people that regard her as one of the best heels in her era, only because there have been reports of people at live shows saying, I can't even hear what she's saying because she is getting a crazy amount of booze. And I used to have this argument before. They're like, oh, you know, they're doing it because they just don't like her. And I'm like, look, they're booing. And that's her job. So <laughs> the harder they boo, the better she is at it. Did you expect your mom to pick up so quickly and just you know and, and and also with that was it from time with your father that she learned that about the business or was it you know something else like uh i feel like of course mom learned things like from my dad um but like i think she she's even said before too like she didn't understand like how hard the road is and just just the mountain that is wrestling, the mountain that is like dad, I guess, until you're in the business. It's like no one will, will be able to understand unless you are in the business. Um, mm -hmm. Honestly, like just how hard it is and how, how intense it all is. Not only that, but she was in the most intense company in the world, like doing this. And so I'm so freaking proud of her. Like I didn't know, like I knew she was a performer. Like I knew she, she, she was a dancer and everything like that. But like, I didn't, I don't think anyone knew, like, she had that beast inside her, and, um, and you know what, like, she, she fought against so much negativity, she fought against a locker room that didn't welcome her, like, she, like, and, like, how ugly people are on, like, 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 media toward her, towards her, and, um, because she didn't look like all the other divas, they give her so much crap about it. And it was just, you know what? She rose above and she provided for our family. And like, she is a Guerrero in my book. Like she, she's my mother and she took care of us and she did, um, she did an amazing job. And I just, uh, yeah, she's so talented. I'm so proud of her. I'm so, I'm so no, no, nostalgia can, can, uh, make you, you know, endear somebody who you probably weren't a fan of at the time that they were more active when she came out for the royal rumble and i just heard her voice say excuse me i i got up and i i just smiled i just had my arms crossed and i smiled i'm like this woman is just nuts i had to explain to my no yeah she is because i had to explain to my girl uh she wasn't watching wrestling at the time of you know your mom being more active and she's like, so they didn't like her? I'm like, no, but this is awesome. And she's like, but everybody's cheering. I'm like, I know, and I can't explain it's that. But <laughs> uh, let, let's circle back to your own career. Uh, you did an amazing spot that I watched over and over and over again last night. Uh, Lucha Underground, oh. you were in the ring uh, with a wrestler and your, and your uncle Chavo. Um, I'm sorry, your cousin Chavo. He's, I'm sorry, yes. excuse me. But... Um, you hit the three amigos, and if you strip it all away, it's three suplexes. Mm -hmm. uh, regular bumps, I get it. But can you tell me what, I, I don't know, it might be a stupid question, but can you tell me what that felt like in there with the intimacy of the smaller crowd, them chanting your dad's name, you in the ring with Chavo doing his moves, and just front row seat to Chavo doing the frog splash? Yeah, uh, that was crazy emotional. Like, I swear, I swear, the whole day, I was literally, like, shaking. Like, shaking. Because I wanted to do such a good job. And I, I, I wanted to, like... I was thinking about so many things. I was thinking about the spot. I was thinking about, like, my promo. I was thinking about, like, wanting to make Chavito proud. And wanting to, like, be... Hopefully come back and do something more with them. And, like, I... And I was thinking about um, the wrestler I was in there was Famous B and uh, ooh, he, he got my blood going. He, he pissed me off, but like- When he went uh, after the family thing, I get it. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, honestly, it was just so emotional and how people received me was overwhelming. And, um, and then like Vampiro on like on the headset, I was like, Oh my God, like it was just, it was all so emotional. And, um, yeah, I was just like, damn, like I finally am getting to be Shaw Guerrero, which I wasn't allowed to be, um, mm -hmm. at, at the other place. I'm finally, I'm getting to do like, even if I, even if I completely shit the bed in the future or whatever, I did this one thing that may that I hope made my dad proud and made Chavito proud and made my family proud. So like even if I completely screw up in the future, I'm like, I did that one thing. And that was amazing. This, this might be an elementary question. And it might be one of those cynical questions kind of. Did you feel your father in the ring? <sighs> like I think so. I think when yeah, like when Chavito and I pointed up at the ceiling after he hit the splash and I and I finished the promo and I did the three amigos like I'm getting like goosebumps right now like I did I did them really well and everybody was no, you, everybody. no you did because I, I've done a little bit of training and I saw I saw the hip pop and the 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 yeah, simultaneous so bump yes I, and and even just genius like just waiting for the third one milking it for the third one um I'm sorry just continue with your point no, no, I'm glad. Thank you for noticing that. I was like, I think they'll like that. And Vito was really proud of me. He's like, oh, I'm so proud of you that you knew to wait and look at everybody before doing the third. And thank, thank, big, huge thank you to Famous B. Like, because, like, he let me get it in. And I really appreciate that. And so uh, he really made me look good. But, um, yeah, I, Dad was there. And I feel like that was always how I wanted to represent him. And I hope I can continue continue to do that in the future with my own career so um yeah you're try trying to get um, me emotional trying to get me emotional D. <gasps> I, I, I i i i i uh i don't know what to say I, I, <laughs> but um no nah, you're making me get all red now yeah. um so um when we talk about the int intimacy of, of that small crowd you you feel all that energy um can you tell me what the fans mean to you when they show love for their father for your father, excuse me. Absolutely. Um, it is honestly like the fans, like besides like my family and I, obviously like, you know, I always think about like, I don't know why this is coming to mind right now, but like Dia de los Muertos, you know, like you okay. have to remember your family. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like whether they're gone, like you remember them and that's how they live on. And like, it's not just our, it's not just my family that does that. It's all of the fans every time. Like you telling me that story about you and my dad, he lives on like people that still chant his name or, or even if they just know, like when they see the little frog splash, like, Oh yeah, didn't any Guerrero do that? He lives on, you know what I mean? And so like the fact that we're not alone in keeping his memory alive and I don't think he's going to be going anywhere anytime, like any time. Hell no. Hell no. Not, like, no. That is it's because of everybody. He, uh, everybody. Everybody just smiles when they think of him. Um, so I know when you go into the professional wrestling business, you are not yourself. You are playing a character in a story that's being told. Now, there is a character that I'd like to know who she is. Can you explain to us who Miss Nixon is? Oh, I was like, where's he going with this? <laughs> um, you like my setup? Do you like my, I, that's I, what I, I do. I dig it, I dig it, absolutely. <laughs> Um, well, like Miss Nixon, she's not necessarily in the wrestling world, but she lives in me. She's in there. Um, <laughs> Miss Nixon is basically Chicago's bad girl. She is the tortured soul of the Windy City. She is everything dark, twisted, and yet somehow it's sexy. So um, basically anything that's like, that's like, oh, it's disturbing, but I like it. That's Nixon, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> That's we need her. a comic book so, about her. We need we need to get you a deal with a comic book publisher. Oh my god, that would be epic. That would be epic. But literally, that's Miss Nixon. She's like the inner badass that I always wanted to be, and um, and she lives like here in Chicago, pretty much. Or when I'm performing with the Vaudette, she that is her. That is Nixon. That's she comes name. out a little bit. She peeks out. She oh, she yeah. sees if if it's safe, and then she makes it unsafe. Yes, <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Um, so I, I want to talk about Mission Pro Wrestling. Uh, the reason we are here is because I'm a sponsor for Mission Pro Wrestling, Run It Back, December 11th in Buda, Texas. 
in Pinball's Kingdom, and you are the special guest ring announcer. Um, I interviewed uh, Chris Van Vliet a few weeks ago, and he also has a history of doing ring announcing. I feel, and you can agree to this point or not, I feel like they're the last commercial for this match. And they are there to get you excited, even before the entrances, before the music hits. How do you, what, can you explain the importance of the ring announcer and when did you learn that? Yeah, absolutely. I learned ring announcing like from the get go when I was at FCW. And um, because like, obviously they're not gonna have like four women's matches, maybe now they would. <laughs> Yeah. But like, uh, but at the time, there was no way in hell there was going to be like, maybe more than one or two women's matches and the whole roster had to travel to every single show. So if you were not booked, or you were just learning uh, wrestling, then basically, you learn to ring announce and I actually got really good at it. I was trained by Matt Marlaro at FCW and I loved it. I'm like, I get the best seat in the house. You got to be really fun. You got to be eloquent. You got to like, not say too much kind of thing, but just enough. And I loved it so much. And honestly, it's so important because like, what's worse? What is worse than somebody being like super monotone? Like the following contest is scheduled for a one fall. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or like when they forget yeah. a name or when they like, and I've, I've made mistakes as a ring announcer, Lord knows, but like, um, but let's just like, and you look at like, iconic ring announcers and like when I was at AEW ring announcing like I felt yeah. so blessed to get to work with Justin Roberts and I remember just being like oh my god I want to come back and like announce again because I want to keep learning from him um but it's um it's so important it's so important because it really is like you are the hype up for it and definitely and like, wrestlers bump their ass off so you better give them a hell of an introduction because they're about to go out there and do that for you so yeah Sure. Uh, more, more of a sense like a, like a ringmaster. You are the guy leading. You are the person leading the charge, leading the show. And when, when I talk about ringmaster, there was a certain show that you did, and you were, um, I, I'm, I'm assuming you were with the Vaudettes, but you were also performing a, along with other circus, I don't want to say freak shows, but circus attractions. Sideshow? Um, Sideshow, yeah. I, I wanted to make sure I, I was respectful as possible. Uh, a circus sideshow with other attractions. Uh, that night, what was the more jarring attraction that, you know, from the other performers that you met? I, I'm sorry. I think I'm having a hard time. Which performance are you talking about? I'm sorry. There, I, I just, I, I, I saw a poster that you put up and you were performing with a circus sideshow. And there were a lot of um, very interesting performances. Uh, you know, the, the short lady or the, the bearded lady, you know, the, that kind of stuff that you find at the circus. I think what you're talking about is Make It Toxic. There was a big circus tent poster and the Vaudettes were yes, there. Yes, that one, yes. Got you. So it was actually, so the reason why there was a circus tent in there is because we opened for an artist named Garrick and, um, and he was doing Make It Toxic. It was all Britney songs. So, um, Britney okay. Spears. and so circus is obviously one of Britney's biggest songs and he recreated it and the Vaudettes curated a show fully like around like Britney and, and the circus kind of theme. And also like, I'm a fire eater. Um, another Vaudette that taught me fire eating is on there. So we made it very circusy kind of thing. Um, so I think that's what you're talking about. Um, that show was lit. Um, but literally, or was was that a pun? Literally, or, or? I that, I okay. think that was one. That was my first fire performance. Was that show, and uh, I was terrified. Okay. Um, but so I'm sorry. What re reframe your question? Oh no! Like, well, you just you explained it to me, so that that kind of negates my question. You, you got it. It's all good. No, no, you're good. You're good. I, I just didn't want to be misinformed. Uh, going back to Mission Pro Wrestling, um, when you talked about being an FCW and NXT there wasn't a probability of having a lot of women on the show. Maybe a six-person invitational, as they used to call it. Mission Pro Wrestling is now offering the spotlight to all women across the board. Um, every position in this company is held by a woman. What do you think Mission Pro Wrestling is doing for women today, and what do you think they can accomplish in the future for women in pro wrestling? 
honestly, I'm like beyond honored right now. I, I'm beyond honored that um, that Thunder Rosa like is trusting me to come in and have a hand in her show. And honestly, like I, I love that because it's just so overdue. It's so overdue. We need to keep like giving women the spotlight and um, and the fact that it's produced and that uh, that women are fully handling it yes. just like mm -hmm. completely like keeps knocking down the social constructs of like oh uh, like oh like what a woman's job is and mm -hmm. so and so I I am I sign me up for anything that keeps doing that and so I I feel extremely honored I can't wait to bring my best announcing chops to the show and I can't wait to just and also like the sisterhood of wrestling it's, yeah. it's insane you know what I mean and so I can't wait to just learn from all the amazing talent that they have booked out there especially Thunder like I'm like I have a hard time not marking out with her because I'm just like oh my god teach me everything you know um and so and also I I appreciate because like she wears multiple hats and you have to wear multiple hats when you're in the wrestling industry and she is like taking that and like like multiplying it times 20 with Miss Pro and I can't wait to be a part of it um, yeah, it's it's really exciting. Um, I have an 11 year old daughter, so you know the, all this amazing roster of women that she can look up to because Cardi B and Nicki Minaj are not going to do it for her. I'm not allowing any of that in uh, near her. So uh, it's really cool for her to see a bunch of badass women, a bunch of strong women. Um, one thing I did want to ask you, you know, you 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 touched on Thunder Rosa, and I just feel like she's in the front of a ship yelling and just saying we're coming um hey my buddy brian is on what's going on brian um what, can you talk about the tenacity and the work ethic of thunder rosa i know you guys have history in wow when she used to bother you as a ring announcer i saw a couple of pictures uh can you talk about thunder rosa for a little bit yeah yeah <laughs> honestly like um I mean, Rosa and I have known each other for a couple of years now, and uh, she's one of the people in the back that will make you smile. And uh, and she's also the same, like, hard ass that's going to tell you, hey, that sucked, you need to do that again. And so um, it's hard to find people like that, that you can, um, that are, you know, they're straight with you, they're so talented, and uh, also they, they have the biggest heart. And so, um, honestly, I've, uh, especially with getting to witness Thunder um, at AEW recently and getting to see just the amazing work that she's done there and also with NWA. Like, I'm, I'm so proud to be a friend, let alone somebody that she's said, like, she will help me and, um, and work with me and whatnot. So uh, she, she really is somebody I look up to. I feel very blessed to know her, and I hope I can make her proud, not only at Mission Pro, but hopefully one day in the ring with her. Um, I, I want to wrestle her. I want to wrestle with her. Um, anything that she would be willing to do, I, I would like to take a bite out of it. I'm going to definitely cast my ballot for that to happen. Uh, Miss Guerrero, um... I'm sorry, you, you got me off guard for a second. Where can they find you on social media? Oh, man. Well, it's funny. We're on Instagram. Because uh, you can find me most active on Instagram, um, at Shaw Guerrero. Also on Twitch, at Shaw Guerrero. Twitter, somebody took my name. Um, so it's Guerrero underscore Shaw. Lame. Oh. Uh, I know. Um, but all good. Flattery. That means you made it. That's form of flattery is imitation, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then God, I think I think I hate them all. Um, eighteen and up Patreon. You guys can check it out. Patreon. I got some custom matches coming at y'all. Make sure you guys order them at Mission Pro Wrestling um, and whatnot. So that'll be super fun with Under. And yeah, that's very fun. Uh, if you're following Shaw Guerrero, click my name right here and follow me at DNC Digital. If you're following me and you haven't followed her yet, I have no idea what you're doing. Make sure you follow her. Latina Heat. Miss Guerrero, I can't tell you what this meant for me. Um, I, hope, I hope you enjoyed yourself. Absolutely. And um, I, I look forward to meeting you that night and um, just hanging out and uh, getting a, a picture and an autograph because I mark out for everybody. And I have no shame when it comes to that. Um, you did such a good job. Thank you. Oh, no, I, I appreciate that. That means so much to me because I don't want to be thrown into – a pile of other interviewers that just ask the same questions. I do, um, you know, a, a little peek behind the curtain. 
I feel like my audience is my guest. So no, if you're enjoying yourself, I'm you sorry. You know me better than I know me. I was like, oh shit, that right, that happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I I just I I do work hard on this, and and I it's something I really enjoy. And I, I, I really, really enjoyed this conversation with you. This video will also be on YouTube. So guys, make sure you like and subscribe, please. All I need is numbers. Just just watch for a second. Um, so it's, it's Mission Pro Wrestling, run it back. Three championships on the line. The beautiful Michelle Guerrero will be your special guest ring announcer. It's uh, December 11th at Pinball's Kingdom, uh, streaming live on the Title Match Network. Um, Social distancing will be enforced. Everybody, please bring your masks. Temperatures will be taken at the door. If you are still uncomfortable with that, like I said, you can still stream it on Title Match Network. That's Miss Shaw Guerrero. Uh, custom matches are coming up, so make sure you go to missionprowrestling.net to order everything. Um, thank you, everybody. Have a great night, and please take care of yourselves. Thanks, guys.